relationship between hypothesis test and confidence interval. This topic is my favorite topic in hypothesis test. In the previous video, I show you how to set up H0 and HA, and then how to calculate the Z, determine the correct procedure, right? And then calculate whether you have a Z test, T test, or proportion. So you calculate Z or T. And then there is a corresponding p-value and then you use the p-value and alpha to decide whether you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We went through all these steps, right? Do you know that we do not need to do that many steps to determine the reject and fail to reject? So let's say you have a problem. You have a H0 and HA. I can use a confidence interval to decide whether you should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Yes, trust me. Let me say this again you have a hypothesis test. You set up an H0, HA, and then you give me alpha equals to whatever you like. I can construct a confidence interval to tell you whether you should reject or fail to reject. So that means we don't need any, we don't need all the concepts that I talked about in the previous video. Do you want to learn this? Let's get started. So what is confidence interval? Confidence interval is you are doing estimation. Estimating what? You are estimating the true mean mu and the true proportion p. Either or. Either you are doing a mu or a p. So the mu can be a z procedure or a t procedure depending on whether you know sigma or not. So confidence interval is doing estimation. You are trying to estimate or you are trying to guess what the mu and p is. What is mu? What is p? you are trying to guess. So for example, we are 95% confident that the true mean mu, or you can say the population mean, there are two ways to call it, population mean or true mean mu is between 10 and 20. What does that mean? There is a mu being unknown. So the mu is unknown. We don't know what, what, what it is. So mu is unknown. So we have a mu. There is a big question mark. We don't know what it is. So we have a confidence interval saying that we are 95% confident that this unknown value is between 10 and 20. The next question is, is that means we will able to find out what mu equals to exactly? The answer is no. You are trying to guess what mu is, but you will never be able to find out what that equals to exactly. I'm trying to guess a number. I'm not trying to find out what it is. So my guess is, the unknown number is between 10 and 20, period. That's it. I am not trying to find out what that is equal, what, what that equals to exactly. What about hypothesis test? Hypothesis test is your testing number. So in confidence interval, you are guessing a number. In hypothesis test, you don't need to guess anymore. I am going to propose the number for you. So no more guessing. I am going to give you what mu is. I am going to give you what p is, but there is no evidence or proof behind those statements. I am giving you a number. There is no support. There is no evidence. There is no proof. So your job is you have to collect data to test the statement I gave you, right? I tell you something. There is no support, evidence, nothing. You are trying to collect evidence to see whether I told you the truth or I lied to you. That is hypothesis test. So for example, Let's say I propose that mu is equal to 15, and uh, the alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 15. So there are two different conclusions, two, e either or, either one or two. Number one is you reject H0, HA is true. That means you have mu equals to not, you have mu not equals to 15. That is a true statement. And then number two is you fail to reject H0 and there is no evidence to show that HA is true. So that means you are not able to show that mu is not equal to 15. What does that mean? That means the H0, the mu equals to 15, remains suspicious. That is hypothesis test, right? Now, I just said that in the very beginning of this video, hey, you talk about all these concepts, I, I watched so many videos to get to this point. I am trying, I'm going to tell you one more thing. You do not need any of this video to make a conclusion. All you have to know is how to set up H0, HA, give me an alpha, and then I can use confidence interval to answer the question for you. So there is no need to calculate the Z, the T, or the P value. How do we do that? Let's find out right now. Okay. so. 
in here. I have three hypothesis tests, yellow, green, purple, right? So the for the yellow one, I have mu equals to 12, 1200, uh, HA is mu not equal. In the green one, I have greater than or equal to less versus less than. And then the last one, I have less than or equal to versus greater than. How do you perform this hypothesis test? So you go to stat on your calculator, you go to stat, and then you go to test, right? So you go to stat, and then you go to test, and then you select a t-test. I am asking you to do a t-test right now. Okay, I am asking you to do a t-test right now. So I have the screenshots right here. So for each hypothesis test, you have what 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 is the what is the difference between these these three screenshots? The difference is right here. Right here. I should do this in, in red. This sign right there. This sign is for HA. This less than is for HA and this greater than is for HA. That is the only difference. How do, how do you know this is a stats problem? So you know this is a stats problem number one. There is no data set given in the problem. The problem, uh, the, the problem statements is written in a few sentences. You read those sentences and then you pick up those numbers and then you input those numbers to your calculator. So the only difference is the alternative hypothesis. If you look at the three H nodes, they do not have the same symbol, right? But those symbol is not in the screenshot. Why? Because the H naught does not determine the p-value. The H A does. The alternative hypothesis determines the p-value. So you have to make sure that the inequality symbol you select is correct. By the way, there is no less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right? Because you cannot use equal in HA. That's why. So once everything is ready, you calculate and then you get this. So for the not equal, the first one on the left, you have the Z, right? Equals to 2.9787 something something. And the P value is pretty small, 0 0.002894. And then you have the X bar, you have the N. And then uh, for the one in the middle, you have the same Z, the P value is different. Do you see that? The yellow one and the green one, look at the HA, they do not have the same sign, right? That completely affects the P value. Or maybe you should compare all three of them. Compare the P value. I have the inequality symbol right next to it. Compare the P value. The one on the left is 0 0.0028. The one in the middle is 0 0.9985. The one on the right is 0 0.0014. Those, these three P values, they are completely different. Do you know why? Because the HAs are different. Not equal, less than, and greater than, they change, change the P value. That's why those three, three P values, they are completely different. The next question is, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. You don't need to rush to your calculator to input this. Just just listen to me right now. After you have you have you finished watching this video, you can use your calculator to do the to do the exercise. The purpose is I am trying to connect confidence interval and hypothesis test. So you have alpha equals to zero point oh five. So the first one is less than alpha. The second one is greater than alpha. The last one is less than alpha. So that means the yellow one and the purple one, they are reject H naught, the one in the middle that is failed to reject, right? So this is my, my conclusion. The first one and the last one reject and reject, the one in the middle failed to reject because the p-value is large, greater than alpha. All right, so far so good. Now, I already have a conclusion for each hypothesis test. Go back to what I said at the beginning of this video. What did I say? I said that we do not need to perform this test at all. That means I can just skip these two screenshots for each, for each test. I can skip everything I did on my calculator and use a confidence interval to jump straight to the conclusion. How? Let me answer that question right now. I am going to use a confidence interval to verify these three results. So I have 
one result for each test, I want to show that they are true. I already have a result. How do you check your work using confidence interval? That is called verify this result. So I'm going to do that right now. So to build a confidence interval, you have to go to stat, you press the stat key, and then you go to test, and then you look for Z interval. We discussed that in, in the previous video where we discussed confidence interval. All right, so you should see this. So you go to stat test, the first screenshot, do you see that if you go to line number seven on, on my calculator, I'm not sure what number it is in your calculator. My calculator is number seven, Z interval. And then you select this number seven, you press enter, you, you go to stats. You don't need to change any of these numbers. They are all there, except you might have to fix the confidence level a little bit. How do you know this is a 95% confidence interval? Look at the graph on the right. You have 5% alpha, right? What is up? What is 100 minus 5? That is equals to 95. Why 100 minus 5? Because they must add up to 100%. So in confidence interval, I drew that picture for you. 95% means you have 95% in the middle. So you still have 5% left, half on the left, half on the right. So those two, those two 2.5%, they add up to 5%. So that's why when alpha is equals to 5%, you got that from the previous problem, right? This has to be a 95% confidence interval. Now, let's change the number. What if alpha is 10%? Then the confidence interval is supposed to be 90%. So 5% alpha, 95% confidence interval. 10% alpha, 90% confidence interval. 1% alpha, 99% confidence interval. What about 20% alpha? then 80% confidence interval. Again, 5% alpha, 95%. They must add up to 100. That is the total area under the curve. 1% alpha, 99% confidence interval. 10% alpha, 90% confidence interval. They must add up to 100%. And then there you go. You have the confidence interval. So in the previous lesson, I show you how to explain the confidence interval, right? So those two numbers mean we are 95% confident that the true mean is between those two numbers. That's how you explain here. That's how you explain. That's how you explain. I haven't checked my work yet. I haven't done any verification. This sentence is for an explanation. You explain what those two numbers mean. How do you check your work? This is the most important portion of the entire video. Let's take a look. So previously, so you don't need to go back to the video. So peep, go back to the previous portion. So previously, we tested these three sets of H0 and HA, right? So using p-values only, no CI, using p-values only, we have this conclusion. The first one and the last one reject, the one in the middle is failed to reject, and then, to use confidence interval to answer a question, reject or fail to reject, I want you to recall the H0. So I wrote the H0 again. You don't need HA. Write H0 again. You don't need HA. So I recall the H0 and then I recall my confidence interval. So first question, how do you, how do you know that, that that is a reject? So my confidence, my H0 is mu is equals to 1200, right? So now watch. And then you have to compare the 1200 and the confidence interval. Is this inside or outside the confidence interval? This number, is this inside or outside? That means is 1200 between those two numbers or not between those two numbers? This is a simple question. So that's the lower the lower limit is 1202, right? So 1200 is definitely not between them. So we call this number is outside the confidence interval. Let's use CI for short, confidence interval. What does that mean? Outside of the confidence interval. The confidence interval said the true mean is between those two numbers. And then you claim a true mean that is outside of those two numbers. So that means your claim most likely is incorrect. Again, confidence interval is, we are saying that the true mean is between those two numbers. 
and then you give me a chu mean you give me an h naught that h naught is not between those two numbers so that means the one you give me most likely is wrong so it's outside of the confidence interval that means we reject h naught We are saying that the true mean is between those two numbers. You give me a number that is not between them, so most likely that number is wrong, so I have to reject your number. How about number two? Number two is greater than or equal to. You might say, uh, hey, uh, 1200 is already outside. Is this still outside? The answer is no. As long as you can find one number that satisfies the inequality, so let's say... Um, so let's say I have this, I have 12, 10. Let me uh, ma match the color. So let me go back and then select the right color. So let me have 12. How about this? 12, 10. So that is greater than or equal to 1200, right? And then this is inside. So as long as you can find one number that is inside the confidence interval, the H0 is still count as inside. So this is inside the confidence interval. So again, the confidence interval is trying to say that the truth is between those two numbers and what you give me contains the truth you will have an h naught the h naught contains the truth so that means this can be right so therefore i have to fail to reject so fail to reject h naught because i can find one number that satisfied h naught and inside the confidence interval and then the last one the purple one is that inside or outside less than less than that so let's find a number so how about this how about uh how about 1100 so that satisfy the inequality or you can do this that satisfy the inequality are they inside or outside they are not even close to the confidence interval the confidence interval contains the truth the truth is between those two numbers you are try you are saying that you are giving a number and say that is the truth Unfortunately, the number you gave me is not between the truth. It's not between the, the, two, the two limits. It's in between them. It's like a box. The confidence interval is like a box. I am saying that the truth is inside the box. You give me a number that isn't outside of the box. So I'm saying that the number you give me is not the truth. All right. So this is outside the confidence interval. So therefore, this is not the truth, then I have to reject H0. It is just that easy. So you, from now on, you give me H0, HA, and an alpha, I can construct a confidence interval to answer your question. I don't need to do any Z test, a T test, calculate the Z, sketch a picture, and then calculate the P value. I don't need to do any of those. As long as I know confidence interval, I can do hypothesis test without performing any procedures in the hypothesis test. All right, so that is the end of this video. If you think the instruction is clear, share the video for me. Give me a like. Appreciate for your like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Appreciate for your help. See you all in the next one. Signing off for now.